Hello, hello, everybody. A few weeks ago, I put a video out uh, called Get Ready for Something New. And that video was showing you how to create the Taurus. So this is the tutorial that I was getting you ready for. Now, when I first started painting the stone, I wasn't really thinking much, obviously. I forgot to turn on my video camera. And um, I actually drew my Taurus and I painted my Taurus. And then when I went to go look, I didn't have the video, so I had to redo that part. So that's why this particular stone looks so doggone messy because it's a, um, a, a reused stone that I did just for the tutorial, okay? So I'm, I've drawn out the, the, uh, the Taurus and now I'm going to paint it. Now the one that I'm going to paint, you're gonna watch me paint, is not the one we're going to use in the actual tutorial. The one I do in the tutorial is the one I had done originally. Now, if you can follow that, you're amazing. Okay, so now we can get started. I am using a bent old paintbrush that is just uh, comfortable for me to be able to bend and um, paint bent lines. <laughs> I'm using an older paint that I had. It's a Delta Ceram coat. It's called Gleams. G-L-E-A-M-S, and it's in 14 karat gold. Uh, you can obviously use any gold you want, but this one here, I like it because it's a little bit thinner and flows a little bit easier. So you can see that my hands are not very steady and my lines are really squiggly and messy. And so I just want you to know that you don't have to have, you know, perfect painting skills in order to do this. I tend to just get my lines laid down and then come back and do the cleanup. Um, those painted, those those drawn lines on there, they they make me nervous, <laughs> and I start to stress. So I lay down my lines, and then I'll come back and I'll clean them up. I'll redo the gold. I'll fill in the blue that needs to be cleaned up, and eventually I'll get it to where I want. Now on this particular stone, because it's a small piece, a small item, the whole center of the uh, Taurus is kind of messy and i'm not concerned about that because on this piece we're going to be actually filling that in and making like a floral design in the center like a flower or a star if you will but if you're doing a larger piece like a tray or a canvas or something you'd want to keep that clean but since we don't have to worry about that here we're just going to straighten out some of the lines and find our center and start painting that in to give us a little bit more structure. So as we are painting in these center um, spokes or petals, whatever you want to call them, the circle that's in the center there from the seed of life, which doesn't belong in the Taurus, is actually giving us a little bit of, of help. It's, it's showing us where those tips of those petals should be ending. So you can use that to keep your petals in check and um, not make them too long. So now I'm just going to keep going um, back and forth, filling in and cleaning up my lines and my blue spaces. And I wanted just to point out that um, a couple of things. In the center of this particular design, you can see how the paint is starting to build up and become very thick. Normally, we don't want to do that, but I do have a fix for you. I'll show you in a little bit. And since this is the second time that I'm painting this Taurus, and this is actually just a prototype, I already know what the center is going to look like, and I'm not being as careful as I really should be. So now I'm going around and I'm cleaning up as much as I, uh, I can, but it gets a little bit rough, um, harder, because some of my lines are very, very thick. So I'm going to just actually paint over some of those gold lines. So use your judgment if you think that your lines are, uh, like in this case, the gold lines are shallow enough, not so thick that you can paint over them with the blue, go right ahead. Don't be afraid if something doesn't look right to either scrape it off and repaint it, which you're going to see me do that in a little bit, or um, just try covering it like I'm doing here. A lot of times, depending on what you're going to do inside these little um, triangles, these little areas here, uh, that's going to determine whether or not you should scrape it off or just paint over it and not worry about it. Um, 
at this point now I've already done the stone so I know what I'm going to be doing in here so I wasn't uh, I wasn't too worried about it but I still wanted to show you how to fix and uh, take care of any anything that's bothering you or you don't like or just doesn't look good so as you can see here the paint was really thick and I wasn't comfortable with leaving it like that it just was getting to be too much so I took my exacto uh, knife and I just scraped the top of the gold paint off like the really thick layers of paint and got it down as level as I can. Um, don't be afraid to do this if you have a fancy finish underneath that, you know, your base coat is something uh, special, then you just want to take good care not to scrape that. And I just have a plain blue base here, so I can just uh, freely scrape away what I need to scrape away and then repaint what needs to be repainted. It'll look, in the long run, it'll look much better than just leaving those uh, very thick, heavy lines. And then just continue doing that until you're really happy with what you have and we can get started. Now, I use my finger and I just go and rub really, really hard on the gold and um, that just helps burnish the paint down and um, tell, takes away some of those extra thick lines, takes away the brush strokes. And now we're at the real stone. This is the one that I painted originally and the one we're going to use in the project. So with the Peacock Pearl Metallic and a sponge, I'm just livening up the base paint here. The, the uh, original blue was just kind of flat and I wanted it to have a little bit of um, life. So I'm sponging it up close to the gold, not all the way. I'm going to add a little bit of the white pearl and make it a little bit brighter. So once that's done, I grab a Q-tip, dampen it a little bit, and I'm just going around to soften those edge marks with the, um, the Q-tip and also to take off any paint that might have got on the gold. So those of you that follow, you know, um, I don't ever know what I'm going to do until I stop doing it. And this here is one of those classic examples of that. Um, it was just a play day for me. And when I came to filling in these petals, I don't know what else to call them. Um, I, I just, I started dotting and I'm thinking, oh my God, these are really kind of all over the place. Some of them are taking three dots. Some of them are taking five. I just went with it. And as it went on, I started to see that it just it wasn't all that bad. So I kept going. And I'm going to give you the same speech that I always give you is I dot not for perfection, I dot for fun and for relaxation. And that's what I would like you to do too. All right, so for the first row, I did a V shape all the way around dotting up. And the second row, I did in every other pattern, I picked the um, the larger of the petals and uh, those are the ones that I use. So I have six going around. Side note, my drawing is not perfect, neither is my painting lines. So I don't have an equal amount of dots in each section. On the third row, I decided to go the opposite direction and use the uh, the inverted V. So the, the point is up to the top and um, I'm dotting down. Now those little things you see flying around in the bottom of the screen there, that would be my hair, my wild and crazy hair. <laughs> so I just did this inverted V pattern all the way around. Next, I'm going to put one dot on each of the corners of the um, elements in the second row there, the blank elements. Keep in mind that later on, I'm gonna come back and plump up all of these dots. As I usually say that uh, start small and then build up later. Now I'm putting just a single dot on each of the bottom uh, last row of those um, outer sections. And again, these two will also get plumped up later. So I forgot to mention that I'm doing all of the white in white pearl, in metallic white pearl. And I will be uh, returning later to top dot all of this stuff again with the white pearl, just, just to plump it up. And I'm uh, mentioning that now because I may have to pull it out of the video later 
as it's um, a long video and I'm trying to get it down to like under 20 minutes. Okay, so outside of each of those dots from the last row, I'm putting four rows progressively larger of uh, walked dots coming down over and to the center. Well, that's a little difficult to explain, but um, you can just see what I'm doing. Now, I, I wanted to fill up this space and I wasn't quite sure how to go about it. So I tried with the, first I tried putting a swoosh coming from the top row over to the right and down and that just was not doing it for me. So I took that out and I decided that this little half moon uh, swoosh over here was, looked pretty good. And um, yeah, I missed one. But don't worry, I'll catch that later. <laughs> so I went back in and I decided this needed a little bit more um, something. You know, it was looking really plain. And that's how you build a pattern or a design. Is you do one thing and then you just let that settle in your mind for a little while. And, and then when you look back at it, you, you'll see what needs to go where, if it needs more or less, and you can make those changes as you go. So now I just realized that I missed that swoosh, and I'm going to put that little baby in there. And I'm also putting in a lot thin, uh, putting in a thinner, smaller swoosh. That bigger one was sitting there all by its lonely, and it, it needed a little company. Now I'm plumping up some of those dots. I can see that they're uneven. And um, although that's never a rule <laughs> that uh, I follow, I do like to keep them somewhat even. So I'm going back and I'm taking care of that, filling up some more space. And up top here, I'm just adding some small straight swooshes going in towards the center. And if you're wondering why I'm skipping around there, it's not, it's, I'm going to do them all. But um, the reason why I'm skipping around is because I had too much paint on my tool. And if I went into one of the smaller spaces with all that paint, it would have um, taken up too much space. So just you learn how to judge and, and decide where to put your paint. If you have to, take some off. So I'm just filling in a little bit more here and there. And you have to follow your own, your own heart. If you think it needs it, put it. If you don't want any of these dots in there, don't put them. If you want to put uh, all swishes, that would be great too. It's up to you. You're the artist. Remember that. Okay, now with a four millimeter crochet hook, I am bringing those two swishes together with just one nice big fat dot. And again, this is still in the pearl white. And I'm doing that all the way around. Now I'm going to be adding a little bit of bling with some hologram. Hologram is a uh, clear glitter paint. It's, uh, glitter paint comes in many different colors. I'm going to be using the turquoise in a little bit here. But this is the hologram. And hologram just kind of picks up the colors that are around it and enhances them and makes them shine. And it's just beautiful. So um, it goes on milky and it dries clear and just um, leaves that sparkle. Leaves that spark. It's beautiful. You want to know hologram, you want to use hologram. <laughs> now that I finished all of the outside spirals with the gold and hologram, I'm going to fill in the, the center, the flower, if you will, and um, let that dry. Now I'm re-covering the white pearl down below with a second coat. I just wanted to give it a little bit of um, dimension and help it pop out a little bit more. Now with a four millimeter crochet hook, it's a flat back on the crochet hook, any four millimeter tool or any tool that'll fit in that space actually, uh, just bringing those two swishes together. And I'm also redotting the four rows of the walked dots around the outside. Again, like I said, I wanted to go back with the white pearl and redot just about everything and plump up my dots make them a little bit more even, and uh, just kind of clean everything up. Now along the outside edge, I'm just going to put a simple, simple border around here. 
I'm using the same gold that I used in the center there. And I'm just putting uh, evenly spaced dots all the way around. And uh, once I'm done that, I'm going to be using the white pearl. And I'm going to put larger dots. Well, actually not larger. They're actually this, about the same size as the gold. And I'm putting those down uh, underneath and in between the row of the gold. And then after that, with the smaller tool, I'm putting a smaller white dot above and in between the gold and directly above the uh, the larger white from below. Now here's the turquoise glitter paint. I don't know why they call it turquoise because it just finishes off with like this beautiful, almost like a sapphire blue. It's just, I don't know, it's gorgeous. And I'm just uh, finishing off the ends of those uh, little swishes there. I don't like to leave the ends of my swishes hanging. I like to always um, put something down the end to just kind of like capture them so they don't look like they're floating away. So here I'm using the turquoise. Now, um, I just also thought that these little white dots in this blue was just too plain. So the turquoise again, I'm just kind of dragging it in, filling it in here and there bringing up just a little bit of um, interest to the other areas that were just so plain and so, so bare. So you can see that once we survived the Taurus, that the rest of this was really quite easy. So if you're not already one of my subscribers, I'd really love to have you join us. Please hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, let me know you like what you're seeing, and um, hit that bell so that you can be notified when I put up my next video. So you can see this turquoise now is starting to dry a little bit and uh, it's just it's turning to that beautiful blue. And continuing with that beautiful turquoisey blue on the outer rim, I am putting a dot in between the top of those two swishes and a big beautiful center top dot to tie it all together. That is going to be so pretty when it dries. Oh, I can't wait for you to see it. All right, now I'm gonna add just one more row of the walked dots, only this time in the turquoise. Now getting ready to finish off the top, we're going to start by putting a large white pearl dot in the center. I'm not sure of the size, I would just say put whatever fits for you. I think that might be like a 10 or 11 millimeter, something like that. Now down below and um, in between, the, the white in the bottom row there. I'm using just the turquoise by itself. I'm not, uh, it's not on top of anything. It's just a turquoise. And with the hologram, I'm putting hologram on the both rows of the white and on the gold. Just giving that a little more character. And then on the top center, I am covering the white pearl with hologram. I'm making sure that I get it all around the edges. I didn't want anything to show. And then finally up the top, I am using some Judykins uh, adhesive. And with a beautiful blue gemstone, I am finishing off the top. Now I'll have the links to all of this stuff down below. I'll have a link for Judykins and the, the gemstones. I get all of this stuff from Amazon. So I'll put that all down below for you. So my friends, we have finished our first Taurus design. So what do you think? I have a few more ideas up my sleeve, so stay tuned. So until next time, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.